Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Limitless Landscapers podcast. I'm Paula, your host and the Landscapers coach. And today I'm bringing you a bit of a rant because... If I can't rant on my own podcast, then where can I? So if you're interested in listening to a few words of rantiness and possibly wisdom, go head over to the show. As the co-founders of the Landscaper Circle, we help you get more money, time and freedom to become limitless through our experiences as fellow landscapers and our tried and tested methods. If you want help with your marketing, managing or growing your business, you've definitely come to the right place. If you're a landscaper, garden designer or supplier to the industry, then hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Now, let's get back to the show. Hello guys and welcome to this episode of the Limitless Landscapers podcast. How are you guys? How are you all doing? We are doing not so good. We just a little roundup of life and the obstacles that tend to be thrown at us at all points is that we have our 15 year old dog who is going to be put to sleep as I'm recording this tomorrow that's pretty much all that's been on our minds. We've been trying to spend a lot of time with her whilst keeping her comfortable and we've booked this in so she can go to sleep at home so it's the most calm place for her because she doesn't like the vet. So this has been all up in the air and of course business is just business. So as we all know dips and troughs shit hits the fan every five minutes, people don't turn up to work, people go home with the keys for diggers and vans and then do not give the keys back, then decide not to have the come in that day, which is always helpful. And so this podcast is a bit of a rant because quite frankly, as a business owner, I've had enough of employees. I don't know how you feel about this, guys, but I feel like we get a poor end of the stick. We obviously, as a business, we invest in HR guidance because I am not a HR specialist and I'm all for outsourcing what you don't know or what you're not an expert in. So you can save time and money really because you can spend your time doing something elsewhere that will generate the money in. So I signed up to Peninsula HR advice and essentially try to do my best with all employees. So this is not a rant to say, treat your employees like shit but what happens when your employees treat you like shit nothing literally nothing and I'm going to give you a few examples because I am pretty pissed off at this point in time and I'm pretty pissed off that employees get to treat their employers like utter shit and get away with it all the time yet if we treated them like shit they would we would not get away with it because it's illegal to do so um and it just really frustrates me so In my landscaping business, we have made the decision to close down the soft landscaping side of things. Um, And part of that was down to a resignation from the manager of that side. Now, the upshot of this, this was a great decision, to be fair. It's something that I didn't see coming, but it also, it works for both of us. I'm not upset that he's gone currently on garden leave but what I am upset about is the fact that he seemed to think that he could work with my existing employees in his new business that he's setting up in direct competition with me and he also felt that it was okay to take my database as well email himself a copy of the database five minutes after he'd handed in his resignation which I also found really quite rude disrespectful and quite frankly a bit of a piss take and essentially what I've also found is that you can get enraged about it which I was but more upset because I had a good relationship with this person and really by doing that it was it's just disrespectful and the upshot is I've reported it to the ICO I've put it on record he's deleted it and I say deleted it because you can make a copy and keep that. I just He just deleted it in front of me off his device. But essentially, unless I catch him in the act, what else can I do? And do I really want to spend my time watching him? Not particularly, no. But I wanted to raise that because this happens more often than not. And essentially, I've had it happen before when my previous designer left. 
he decided on numerous occasions to email himself the database. And it is actually a breach of contract. So from an employment law perspective, this is absolutely not allowed. And it can be, if they haven't already resigned, it can be a disciplinary issue. It can be a sackable offence, whatever you want, really. But ultimately, on both occasions, I've had to send out a cease and desist letter. And what pisses me off is what person in their right mind thinks that it's okay to take someone's hard-earned client database that they've built over the last now 14 years and decide that they're going to take it because they're going to set up and they're going to pick and choose what clients they want and approach them separately. Obviously undercutting me because they don't have the overheads and they don't have the markups and margins that we need to make in order to create a successful and profitable business. And I just think it's an absolute piss tank and I'm fed up with it. And essentially, I I question why I continue to employ people because the people that you think you can trust me, you can't. There's no one I trust in this business apart from my husband. And that is because obviously I trust him implicitly as a partner in life. And also we are both on the same page and we are doing this for the same reasons, i.e. for our family. We are creating, trying to create a life um, that is great for our family and for us going forward and also serving clients in the best way we can. So that was one pretty piss taking person that I've employed too, if you include the other guy that did the same thing. And then today, the soft landscaping team are closing down, but basically I've had to make one of the roles redundant and it's short term redundancy. I've given him five weeks worth of work to do in the run up. He can take his holiday that he's owed. He can take time off for any trial days or interviews. There's no restriction on that, but there's also work for him to do so that obviously he gets paid a good amount at the end of the month. He just doesn't show up today. Why? No response, nothing. Doesn't answer the phone, doesn't answer messages. It doesn't answer his teammates messages or phone calls just a complete ignorance just not turning up and then of course the knock-on effect to this is letting the clients know that we are not going to be there and potentially we may not be back ever again because is this person going to show up tomorrow or are they just going to quit now it happened last week as well and i'm just like as employers why do we still have to continue to maintain this yeah, but even if they do that, there's no consequences for them. There's absolutely no consequence for them. I've contacted my HR department to see what the advice is, because quite frankly, why the fuck should I pay him if he's not going to turn up to work? I, f I find it just unbelievably unfair on employers. Now, I understand there's rogue employers out there, and I understand that some places of work is horrible to work in. That is not the case here and for many of our small business owners. We are small business owners. We are trying to build a business and a life for ourselves and along the way, make other people's lives enriched, whether that's giving them a job that they love, whether that's paying, paying them a decent amount of money, which we do, whether that's opting them into the pension scheme so that they've got something upon retirement, whether that's progressing their careers and you know giving them training and, and stuff like that. We're trying to get people employed and enjoying their employment, yet we are always made out to be the villains. And then when the employees dick around, take the piss, we have to jump through hoops in order to make sure that we're doing it correctly. So I am just, I am literally so fed up that I am literally thinking about not having any employees anymore because then the headache would just go away. But I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this because I can't be the only one as a small business owner that is building a reputation, building a business, building a life and then just gets fucked over by people that don't give a shit and generally they're employees and they're always out for themselves. There's never any give and take, yet if you don't give them what they want, they throw their toys out the pram. And it just, it casts me back to a time now... One of my guys, he hates it that I never let him forget this. But when I had my second child, I was back in hospital with an infection. At the time, we had obviously landscapers still out working. We had a company to run. And I remember at the time, Mike wouldn't show me his phone. 
And I was like, what's happening? He was like, you don't want to see it. And I was like, you saying that means I absolutely do want to see this. And essentially, long story short, one of my teams of landscapers decided to set up their own business, landscaping business, set it up on Facebook, put an, a Facebook page up, got some reviews from their parents and friends to make it look like a real business and do this all while I was having a baby and back in hospital with an infection of which I couldn't have my baby in hospital with me. So you can imagine the rage I felt then. I still feel a bit of rage for that time, even though this is going back, what, seven years now, because again, it's just the disrespectfulness. Now, nothing ever happened with that because essentially it was the idea of the guy who set up the Facebook page and decided that this is what he was going to do. He wanted to negotiate a pay rise. So he did that at that exact time when I was in hospital so that Mike was meant to be on paternity leave because I already had a two-year-old um, to look after. Uh, I was unable to do anything because I had an emergency C-section and then went in with an infection that I was in hospital for another four or five days. So Mike could not do the work. So we're in a very vulnerable position. So we rely, were reliant upon these other guys to do the work and they wanted a pay rise. So they engineered that whole situation. Now, I don't know about you, but that is just, it, it, it just blows my mind that somebody could go to those lengths to do that. Now that guy no longer works for us. One of them does, one of them doesn't. But essentially, I can't forget about that because that was just the first probably one of the first instances where I felt that someone had stabbed me in the back. I felt really upset at the time. I remember being like crying my eyes out, mainly obviously I've got hormones flying around, but also that someone could do that to you when you trusted them, you've given them a really good, like they've got a good job, they've got the money I thought they wanted. Um, they're working on projects that are really nice projects. It's not just a quick, it's not five grand, project that hasn't got any creativity they're, they're able to use their creativity they're able to work to designs they're, they're able to enhance their skill set and I thought everyone was happy but no instead they made the they they timed it at the perfect point where Mike had to say yes to a pay rise now that guy subsequently left months later but the point being it's one of the first instances that stick in my brain of employees just stabbing you in the back and as I've gone on this journey of business, now we're approaching 15 years next year, the backstabbing continues and it will always continue because no one gives a shit about your business apart from you. And that's why I find it really difficult when I'm implementing systems and processes because I can't fully trust people because my experience says to me, you shouldn't. And recently it's just shown me exactly again why you shouldn't trust people. I'll give you another example. I have two apprentices that I can no longer offer their apprenticeship because we're not offering soft landscaping. So the apprentice provider has said, absolutely not. We're going to have to place them into different placements, which is absolutely fine. I have a conversation with both apprentices and say, look, you can be released for any interviews, any trial days, whatever. We'll work around you because obviously this is not your problem. I can't now offer it as ongoing apprenticeship because the college won't allow me to. So these are your options and we'll help you get placed in a new company that can deliver that. Now, one of the apprentices was adamant that he didn't want to do an apprenticeship anymore. He just wanted to work for us as a hard landscaper. Fine. He could have stayed with us as a hard landscaper labourer. But again, behind our backs, because even though we're as honest and open with people, they never are honest and open with you. He then changes his mind, which is absolutely fine. My problem is that he he didn't have that honest conversation with us and say, actually, I think I've changed my mind. I'm going to go for some interviews. He booked the interviews and didn't turn up and then told our other guy to tell us. Because I don't know why are people so afraid to have open and honest conversations in life. At the end of the day, I only work with honesty and openness, because what is the point in being anything other than open and honest? You don't get anywhere, but essentially doesn't, it clearly doesn't work from an employee level because they still are not open and honest with you. 
and they still create shit. And now back to the drawing board. So my point for this, obviously it's my podcast, so I can rant if I want. I might not get any listeners, that's fine. But I would hope that maybe you're feeling a bit like this, that you're fed up with employees. Or I know for a fact, one of my clients, they can't seem to find an employee. They'll turn up for trial days, but then they don't want to become an employee. Why? They can't find out the reasons why. I'm just basically wanted to air the fact that us business owners are not all assholes and most of us want the best for our employees and want to create a really good environment for them to thrive and prosper as much as we want our businesses to thrive and prosper because I know that if I get some really good employees that work for me and I can implement the systems and processes that's needed that we can get away from the business then the business continues to run and we're happy they're happy However, if I can't, then we have to look at a whole new model. So for me, it's going back to the drawing board. And my first port of call, I bet you've guessed it if you've been around these parts for any length of time, is I am going to look at our cash flow. And I'm going to look at the options that are available to us because there's always a way. There's always a way out of anything. There's always a solution to be had. And I'm going to look at various options that we can do with the business, with subbies staff no staff how that looks what that will will do to our clients for our clients how that will pan out in the diary how that will pan out in income how that will pan out in profit all of that jazz and then i'm going to make some decisions and i will share these decisions with you because i am honest and open as life is never perfect there's always going to be ups and downs and obstacles but it's how you deal with them that matters so i'm going to Go back to the drawing board. I'm going to mull over some decisions and then I'll come back to you with anything I found out. In the meantime, if this podcast related, if you related to this podcast in any way, if you are sick to death of employees treating you like shit, please send me a message or drop me a review or DM me on Instagram. I'm at the Landscapers Coach or at the Limitless Landscapers Podcast. I'm Paula at the landscaperscoach.co.uk if you want to send me an email. But essentially know that you're not alone. And I know most of us want to do right, but for God's sake, when is anyone going to give us business owners a break? When are we not going to have to jump through hoops? Why do we always have to be the ones that suffer? That's my final thoughts on this podcast. Thank you for listening if you've got this far and I won't be back next week. I'm actually going on a well-deserved break. So I will not be here for a new podcast next week, but I'll be back the following week for a new Limitless Landscapes podcast. Hopefully not a rant. Hopefully it will be all positivity, smiles and light, which is what I am 90% of the time. This 10% is just pissing me off right now. So see you guys later.